In this animation, we will examine resonance in a circuit containing only a capacitor and an inductor, a so-called LC circuit. It may be helpful to recall that the term resonance is used to describe phenomena that occur at specific frequencies. One example of a resonant phenomenon is the horizontal spring ball system on a frictionless surface, shown here. When the spring is stretched from its equilibrium position and released, there is an exchange of energy between the elastic potential energy stored in the spring and the kinetic energy of the ball. If we start with the spring stretched from its equilibrium position, all of the energy in the system is stored in the spring as elastic potential energy. However, the force by the spring on the ball pulls the ball toward the spring's equilibrium position and the ball gains kinetic energy as the amount of stretch in the spring and thus the amount of elastic potential energy is correspondingly diminished. This decrease in elastic potential energy and increase in kinetic energy continues until the spring reaches its equilibrium length. At this instant, all of the energy in the system is kinetic energy as there is no stretch or compression in the spring. However, the momentum of the ball will cause it to continue on its way, causing the spring to compress. This will cause the amount of elastic potential energy to increase at the cost of the ball's kinetic energy. The ball starts to slow down. This exchange of kinetic energy for elastic potential energy continues until all of the ball's kinetic energy is converted to elastic potential energy and the ball momentarily stops. At this instant, the force of the spring on the ball will push the ball back toward the equilibrium position of the spring. The compression in the spring decreases, reducing the amount of elastic potential energy. Simultaneously, the ball speeds up, increasing its kinetic energy. This exchange of elastic potential energy for kinetic energy continues until the ball again reaches the equilibrium position of the spring. At this instant, the compression in the spring is gone, as is its elastic potential energy, and all of the system's energy is kinetic energy associated with the moving ball. Once again, the momentum of the ball causes it to continue on and create a stretch in the spring. This will cause the elastic potential energy of the spring to increase while decreasing the ball's kinetic energy. This will bring us back to our starting point, and in the absence of any non-conservative forces, such as friction, this motion will persist indefinitely. This motion will repeat at a specific frequency determined by the spring constant of the spring and the mass of the ball. Since the motion will only repeat at that certain frequency, it is a resonant phenomenon. This very common and visual example of resonance can help us understand what is happening in a simple LC circuit, as these two systems are very similar mathematically. In the LC circuit, we will start with a fully charged capacitor. This will be analogous to the stretched spring that we talked about earlier. All of the energy of this system is stored in the electric field in between the plates of the capacitor. This is analogous to starting with a fully stretched spring. The capacitor begins to discharge, giving rise to an increasing counterclockwise current in the circuit. This changing current produces a magnetic field in the inductor. The energy in the system is being converted 
from the electrical field of the capacitor to the magnetic field of the inductor. When the capacitor is fully discharged, we have the maximum current in the circuit and thus the maximum magnetic field in the inductor. This is analogous to all of the energy in the spring ball system being kinetic energy. The induced voltage in the inductor keeps current flowing in the circuit. This means that the magnetic field will decrease and the charge on the plates of the capacitor will start to increase, but with the opposite polarity. The energy of the system is going from being stored in the magnetic field of the inductor to the electric field of the capacitor. This is analogous to the spring being compressed after passing through its equilibrium length. The exchange of electric energy and magnetic energy continues as it did before. The capacitor becomes fully charged for an instant, which is analogous to the fully compressed spring. Then, the capacitor begins to discharge, giving rise to a changing current. This changing current gives rise to a magnetic field in the inductor, and we have the exchange of electrical energy into magnetic energy. When the capacitor is fully discharged, the current in the circuit is at its maximum value, and all of the electrical energy has been converted into magnetic energy. The induced voltage keeps the current flowing, and the exchange of magnetic energy for electrical energy begins. The cycle will end up back where it started, with the capacitor fully charged and with its original polarity. Just as with the spring ball system, this cycle repeats at a specific frequency determined by the values of the capacitor and inductor in the circuit. This is another example of a resonant phenomenon.